Good afternoon, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Tyler Barker. I would like to welcome you to our Family Appreciation Week, uh, where we are, which we are hosting in place of Family Weekend, uh, which has been postponed until the spring semester. Um, the purpose of Family Appreciation Week is for us to kind of show gratitude and just a, you know, a sense of thank you for all that you do as a parent and as family members in support of our Georgia Tech students. Uh, we truly appreciate you and just being along the ride with us and just helping helping them get to the finish line. We're having a great week thus far. Uh, this afternoon, we were joined by Dean Stein uh, and Casey Chaviano, just discussing some updates from campus. Uh, but this evening, we are joined by Dr. Jeremy Brown, um, who is the impact um, coordinator here on campus within the Office of Institute Diversity, Equity and Inclusion, as well as Courtney Hill, um, who serves as the communication manager uh, within the same office and so they are here to kind of talk about impact programs and living learning communities if you have any questions for jeremy or courtney uh, throughout their presentations please feel free to utilize the q a chat box um, once again if you have any questions for jeremy or courtney um, please feel free to utilize the q a chat box um, and without further ado um, if dr brown can uh, cue his screen up uh, we'll go ahead and get that presentation started All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Brown. We're now live. All right, awesome. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Jeremy Brown, and so I would like to present to you about the IMPACT community. Um, IMPACT is a learning, uh, living learning community that is on campus. We are going on our second year, and so I would like to present um, a couple things about IMPACT, Institute Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Um, as well as Institute Communication. So myself and Courtney Hill will be going over that. And so let's get started. And so here's a brief overview of the um, information that we'll be covering today, which will um, cover not only just impact, um, but also other LLCs. Um, when I say LLC, that stands for Living Learning Community. And so you'll hear me reference um, a lot of the time around impact um, I might say Impact LLC is the same program, um, as well as um, IDI, which is Institute Diversity, Equity and Inclusion. And so make sure you pay attention to some of those things when we go over it. So we'll be going over again uh, a brief introduction. I'll be going over the hybrid and remote format of live and learning communities, why that's typically different than your normal, um, obviously in-person format. We'll be going over the basics of Impact, and that includes programming, mentorship, um, the end of the year expo, as well as just a true false, a fun kind of game to play um, about impact. Courtney will be going over the Institute communication piece, as well as IDI updates. Um, I'll talk about the application process and then we'll do Q&A. And, and so introduction. So who are you talking to? <laughs> My name is Dr. Jeremy Brown. I've been here at Tech for about seven years. Um, from Charlotte, North Carolina, graduated from UNC Chapel Hill, uh, went to grad school, UNC Wilmington. And one of the major things that really attracted me to impact community is um, the diversity and equity and sustainability part of it, but particularly the diversity part. Um, a lot of my research is in black male achievement and persistence, as well as asset based learning. And so live and learning communities do intersect with that. I do have a housing background, and so working in residence life has attributed it to a lot of living on campus, obviously with students um, using campus services and housing, but I've always wanted to say, how do they learn on campus? What are some of the programs that they do? Um, so impact again is, is some of that intersection between diversity and housing that has really made my opportunity here at Tech um, more richer. A favorite thing I would say about impact is getting to know the students that are here, seeing their growth and development, seeing them matriculate is very powerful. Um, also, just going to the fun events, you know, I, I go to the events with them, of course, with my mask on. Um, typically in the past years, we've done uh, basketball games, sporting games, but because of COVID, we've changed that a little, but we still are doing outings. And so I look forward to telling you what some of those are. Um, but I really love um, getting to see the growth in the students, seeing students come in their first year, um, grow to their sophomore, junior and senior years is a very, very, very powerful thing. 
um, is something I really admire about tech is seeing these students come back and you know asking for resources, um, looking for a letter of reference and different things like that. And so that's one of my favorite um, things about impact. So what is a living learning community? So a lot of you might have students that particularly are looking at Georgia Tech. And so I, I really would encourage you um, if you don't have a current student in the living learning community to consider um, a living learning community. And what that is, is basically it's an academic strategy. So you have students that do live on campus, um, particularly in different residence halls, but the different LLCs that you see here um, and that I'm about to show you um, are a little bit different in the way they allow collaboration to happen. We allow academics to be really brought to students i.e. you might have some LLCs where students are taking class um, in the lounge of the um, residence hall. So they might be taking a class in the actual residence hall. They might take a practicum or a capstone or a project within the residence hall space. Um, they get to collaborate with the faculty. Like I said, they get to collaborate with students. And it's really a blend of academic and social needs that really allows these LLCs to stand out. Not that students that are just in general housing don't get to experience some of those things, but the particular thing about living learning communities is that they get a nuanced, more specific experience towards that. And so I'll talk to you a little bit about what those nuanced experiences are. And so here are a couple narratives from impact students. Um, I'm a qualitative researcher, and so I love hearing the narratives of people who I talk to and the students I think are the best population to get that from. And so students, um, one, one of my students that I talked to, that's the actual second year, told me this, which is impact is uh, the perfect LLC for them. They felt um, they love doers, thinkers, problem solvers, and they felt like this live and learning community was a little bit better for them because they wanted to be in the Atlanta community. They don't, they wanted to address issues within Atlanta as well as solve them. So they also just want to do community service and go to events and do projects, but what can we do to solve them? What can we do to think about civic engagement? What can we do to think about the greater society outside of Atlanta and Georgia Tech? And so um, another first year student, so the second one is from a first year student. So they said impact encourages me to work together with others and learn more about the issues that matter most in our society. Um, impact is truly the best decision I could have made my first year coming here at Tech. And so hearing that again in, in, a, in any first year experience, but hearing that in a COVID in a stressful pandemic time and hearing that these students are still getting a positive enriching experience was very encouraging to me. And so my next ones here under diversity, sustainability and social good are narratives from our impact faculty. And so some of those include um, one, one faculty member from our Britain Fellows Ivan Allen program said that helping students gain diverse experiences around tech in Atlanta is their definition of diversity. Um, one of the sustainable campus partners that I talked to said that they like to promote sustainability and committing to practices that help our community thrive. So giving students some of those opportunities, giving them professional opportunities. And um, another faculty member that works in a social good class that works in social justice said that they would like students to make a difference through social good, which they define as anything that benefits our community and influences the greatest amount of people. Um, I agree with all three of those definitions, and I think those narratives from both the students and faculty and staff do speak to the quality of impact. So, so again, um, impact this year um, is a little bit different than some of your other living learning communities, and the fact is that we do hybrid programming. And so hybrid programming basically means that we are also doing in-person events. We're doing virtual events. Um, obviously, the in-person events that we're doing safely are um, being counted towards in terms of their credit that they get for impact. And so some of the events that we do um, do require students to go off campus, but we do um, we do it in a safe way um, in terms of students not having to walk. Students are on a bus. We typically have multiple buses where students are taking again for social distancing. Um, but our program is hybrid in the fact that we do virtual um, 
faculty talks, we do coffee talks, we do check ins with other staff and campus partners around tech, as well as we do in person events, whether that be a project day, whether that be an opportunity for students to meet someone. Um, and so that hybrid format, that blended format allows us to do a little bit more program than just remote. Um, there are certain LLCs that are doing just remote programming for students that are out of state, students that might be overseas. But for impact, we are doing a hybrid format um, and we will consider doing remote. But for now, we're sticking with hybrid, which again is the blended format of in-person and, and virtual. Um, we do more in-person events, but we also, like I said, do virtual. Um, but for the time being, in, impact is just a hybrid format and not just solely remote. I think live and learning communities should have a in-person component. Um, so I believe in just making that happen. And so that's how I'm running impact this year. OK, so the impact community, you're probably asking what is it entail? Like what you know, you, you say students live and learn on campus, but what does that actually mean? And so I will always like to give kind of a, a quality explanation of what it is. And so impact is a community where again we facilitate belonging and care around um, just a hybrid based and safe program model that we do um, around students being involved both in the city of Atlanta as well as Georgia Tech. Um, students have a range of activities to choose from, from housing events. We also do, like I said, virtual talks. Um, they're also working on an impact project. They're working on their classes together. Um, but we have space too. Again, if you're if you're thinking about living and learning, these students live together and so they interact together. They learn from each other. They see someone that's diverse um, and that looks um, totally different from them, but they can learn from them and they can understand from them and they can grow from those experiences um, through communication with these individuals. And so um, the lounge, as you see here, is a perfect opportunity for students to do that. This year, as well as last year when we got it renovated, students are always bringing in their food. Um, sometimes they'll go to the dining hall and bring in their um, food and their homework. Sometimes they are just in here doing homework. They might have music on. Um, and so students get to interact and watch TV. Um, some watch movie. We, we have movie nights. We have socials. Halloween is coming up, so we'll likely have some trick or treat or Halloween based programs. Um, and I also like to give people the ROI. What's the return on investment? So you invest $400 per semester. Each student is paying $400 per semester, but what are you getting in return? And so some of these meals that we're buying, you know, might cost them. Um, some of these high price catered meals might be costing them a lot of money over 20 bucks. And so we'll get it for impact for cheap. Um, and so we'll get, you know, you, you'll get 50% of investment. You, we have giveaways and swag. And so we do sweatshirts, hoodies, uh, we do jackets, we do hats, field trips. And so those off campus field trips that might cost um, a little bit over $100 might cost impact just 30 bucks. Um, retreats, like I, like I just said, the same. We might have a retreat where students are going somewhere, but we pay for it in impact. And because we have a group discount, um, and we have the campus partners and partnerships. A lot of these things are cheaper for impact. And so students are paying the $400 at the beginning of the semester. We cover all of these things here, includes, including events, ticketed events, retreats, field trips. They get food at every meeting that they come to. Um, and so the return on investment is super high for what a normal Georgia Tech student or a normal student or a person would pay impact students are getting it at a um, not only discounted rate but they're getting more value because they're hanging with their students um, they get an impact um, either swag item they're also getting food like i said in most events we are feeding them and so the return on investment is very high for impact and so i would encourage you to um, consider impact if you have a student um, that is considering coming to georgia tech and or already here and so programming and so some of the programs that I mentioned um, to you um, include um, going to events close to Georgia Tech. So some of those might include the Georgia Aquarium, um, which we're going to next week. We went to the Center for Civil Human Rights, which um, is parallel to some of the beliefs of impact of diversity, uh, social justice, civil rights. 
and uh, we also do the Georgia Tech Candida building. The Candida building is a certified lead platinum building that is on campus that is built off of the uh, equity pedal. And so we do events at the Candida building and we have one coming up next week. And so as you see here from some of these pictures, students are um, still masked up six feet you know, apart, um, interacting, talking with each other, but also going out into the community and doing these events. Uh, we have myself obviously always showing up at each event. We have three or four student assistants that show up as well as impact mentors, which are second year students. Um, we have different students that are also just kind of chaperones with us just to make sure students are safe. And uh, we're, we're also taking the bus and making sure students have ample transportation. I don't believe in um, students just kind of walking all over the city. I think safety first is one of my pillars and so um, yeah. And so mentorship and partnership and so there's several things that I just mentioned, which is the um, impact mentors as well as the living building equity champions or LBACs. And so to the left here, as you can see, the living building equity champions are just um, sophomore through graduate students who mentor and do programs around equity. Um, those equity and diversity programs are um, some super incredible programs from white papers to writing grants. Um, and so impact students do have the opportunity to work with them as well as apply to the LBAC program. And so the living building or living building equity champions or LBAC program is something that has been going on uh, for about eight years, but we just kicked off the the impact and um, living building equity champions collaboration. And so we are starting that again this year. Second year impact, as you see here, these students here um, are second year students who were in impact the first year. They come back, they mentor with us. They are team leaders in our GT1000 class. They come and do events with our impact students. Some are in the lounge here right now. And so students um, particularly come and enjoy impact in their first year and come back and give back to the community. And so we create, we, we as an impact create those mentorships and partnerships. The partnerships we include on campus include, um, we work with Scheller College of Business. We work with the College of Computing. Um, we have a Hopper Dean grant with them as well as several classes that we take. Um, we also team with the Ivan Allen School um, of Liberal Arts as well as the College of Design and we are currently working on a partnership within the College of Engineering and so we're trying to build these partnerships to give students more resources and support and so. So the impact end of the year expo and so this expo that you see here is for current impact students and so if you are a parent on the call and you currently have an impact student um, this is for you and so we are doing this friday november 20th 4 30 p.m to 8 p.m at the gt hotel um, we do plan to serve a catered dinner for all attendees and so registration will be from 4 30 to 5 p.m um, at the expo, you'll get to see all impact projects that include uh, police reform. We're also working on some campus services projects. Some students are working on um, LGBTQIA, sexual education. There's a plethora of these projects um, that these students are being in their project teams. And within those project teams, you'll see different projects um, ranging from reports to assessments to videos to interviews to qualitative and quantitative um, based stuff. And so um, you'll get the chance to hear from current students, staff and faculty from impact. And so again, if you are a current parent on the call with a student in impact, um, you do you you will get a um, correspondence email. You'll get an, a message from either your student. You'll get it from me as well about the expo. So more details will be coming about that, but I did want to mention it to any current parent that might be on the call. Um, that has a student in impact you are invited and so you will get information from me um, coming soon so true or false and so these are um, some some questions that i think trip a lot of people up and i want to make sure that i address which ones are true and obviously which ones are false so number one because of covid llc's haven't done many events or activities um that's false um, a lot of LLCs are still, like I said, doing remote, doing hybrid, doing in-person events based on um, the comfortable 
um, level of their students and their staff and their faculty. And so it is varying, but but some students um, have told us that they enjoy those in person activities. They do like virtual, but um, students are, I mean, with LLCs are doing events this uh, semester with their students. And so, you know, if you heard, if you heard that, that's false. If they're not doing events because they are. Number two, the LLC courses are super hard and take up a ton of time. A lot of these courses are not. They're one to three credit courses. Typically, there are they are project based courses, and so a lot of the work is around project development and project implementation. Um, but they're not super hard in terms of taking up a lot of time, but they will take up um, a few hours each week, depending on the workload. And a lot of those components are team based. And so students aren't working on those just alone. They are typically working with a peer or working with the group. And so I would say that one's false as well. One, once LLC students, number three, once LLC students finish their first year, they are no longer part of their LLC. And that's also a false statement. Students can come back to their LLCs to either participate. Um, in some LLCs that I presented earlier, they do serve as uh, mentors. And so impact students that are second years um, do come back and serve as mentors for the first year students. And so they are still part of the LLC. Um, a lot of our LLCs do newsletters. And so if you are a sophomore student, you'll receive a digital MailChimp newsletter or a PDF saying kind of what's going on in the community. Um, but we don't outcast or say once students are done, we typically always invite you um, back to the LLC for different experiences. The only exception is honors in which all of those students continue on from first year all the way um, to graduation. And obviously they're still in the LLC at that point too. The last one is there are a variety of academic resources available. So yes, that is true. There are a variety of mentoring. Um, like I mentioned earlier, there's tutoring support. There's plus sessions. Um, there's one on one undergraduate sessions. Um, there are tutors in our community that come and tutor for um, chem classes, physics classes. Um, there's a couple CS classes and math classes that we also tutor for. And so we there are a plethora of just general Georgia Tech resources, and then there's a lot of um, LLC resources and impact is the same. And the next one is what is the average GPA among students and then else I'll give you all a couple seconds to throw some guesses out there. And you can put them in the chat or um, let's we'll see if someone gets it right. Let's see. I'll wait. Give give people about 10 more seconds. see if anyone gets it right okay so that average is 3.7 so the average gpa among students um, within living learning communities 3.7 and so that has been a wide standing gpa number um, that was measured um, a year ago and so that number could change obviously this year pending grades and gpas and so but the average um, GPA that you'll get from any living learning community um, just total you know as a whole at Georgia Tech is going to be a 3.7 or above and so that again is speaking to the quality of living learning communities what they mean to the community um, as well as the success of students matriculating and the retention of living learning communities is a tad high and so we are very proud of that um as first year students a lot of our lcs are first year and so we are very proud of that statistic okay now i'm passing it to um court hi uh good evening everyone um, my name is Courtney Hill and I am the communications manager for Institute Diversity, Equity and Inclusion at Georgia Tech. I'm also a Georgia Tech alumnus. Um, I'm happy to be here tonight. Uh, Dr. Brown wanted me to um, answer a few questions uh, from the communications perspective on what your students are going through or what they will go through as part of impact. Um, a little bit about our office, Institute Diversity, Equity and Inclusion, also known as IDEI, houses several campus units for faculty and staff, and we also house the student unit uh, known as the Center for Student Diversity and Inclusion, or CSDI. 
CSDI houses the Office for Hispanic Office of Hispanic Initiatives, the Office of Minority Education and Development, the Center for the Study of Women, Science and Technology, or WIST, as Jeremy referenced, uh, which is also another LLC. And of course, uh, CSDI houses the Impact Living Learning Community. Um, I, I just want to take a, a quick moment to brag on Jeremy um, a bit. He's had some wonderful uh, first year success with the Impact LLC. Um, Impact um, implemented a total of 19 events a semester. Um, nine were in person, 10 virtually for its first year living learning community students. And um, Jeremy touched on this um, a little bit, but uh, the Living Building Equity Champions or LBACs initiative has been revamped um, on campus and is now under the Impact LLC umbrella. And what LBAC is, is it's where students can um, submit applications, um, both undergraduate and graduate students from across Georgia Tech. Um, and the initiative participates in some of the, some of the campus's um, areas around sustainability. Um, if Dr. Brown may be able to talk a little bit more about that. Um, one of the reasons that Dr. Brown wanted me uh, to speak with parents this evening is also to share a little bit of information on how Georgia Tech is keeping its community safe. Um, since March, Georgia Tech has conducted 82,000 COVID-19 tests. So far this month, um, there have been 68 positive cases, but since March, out of those 82,000 tested, just over 1,000 tests have come back positive across faculty, um, student, and staff populations. Um, there is a website here, um, health.gatech, dot edu backslash coronavirus um, backslash health dash alerts which is a wonderful website it gives real-time data tracking at georgia tech um, so you can see uh, who has tested positive um, in our community um, there's also wonderful sortable graphics where you can sort data by date you can sort data by population um, and this was put up because the Institute wants to offer full transparency on how it is keeping the campus community safe. Not only has it upped its uh, testing locations around campus, but uh, beginning this summer, the Institute in, um, implemented a campaign called Jackets Protect Jackets, where they encourage everyone who is on campus to get COVID-19 testing weekly, and that has gone over very, very well. Um, I wanted to share a few um, upcoming IDEI student workshops and events that are available for your students. Um, this week, we're very, very excited um, to host the African American Male Initiative Fall Leadership Summit. And as Jeremy mentioned, on November the 20th will be the Impact End of Year Expo. Um, I'm also happy to uh, share uh, some of these dates and and links for these with Jeremy. If you'd like more information on them, uh, please feel free to reach out to him or the event coordinators. On my last slide, just some, um, some helpful websites for parents and students. Of course, you can learn more about the Impact Living Learning Community at impactcommunity.gatech.edu. Um, the Main Institute Diversity website is diversity.gatech.edu. Um, the Division of Student Life um, holds a number of wonderful programs for students. Um, you can visit that site to find out how your child can um, get involved on campus. Um, and of course, um, some COVID-19 related websites, mytest.gatech.edu is where your student would go um, to register for their weekly COVID testing. And all of their information is provided there, including um, um, test results, which by the way, come back within a matter of uh, 12 to 24 hours in most cases. And also uh, Georgia Tech regularly updates its COVID-19 testing locations. Um, since we are now in colder months, um, we uh, have moved the, the outside testing locations to inside um, to offer for a better experience. But again, I will, of course, share all of these um, with Dr. Brown um, in the event um, coordinators for this evening, if you'd like to have these sites, or I can also drop them in the Q&A. 
Thanks so much, Dr. Brown. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now if you'd like to continue. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Courtney. All right. And so how to apply? You're probably wondering what is the application process? What do I need to do? And so I'll, I'll briefly break that down again. I know we have Q&A coming up and so I'll move to that very shortly. Um, admitted students within impact and any other uh, other living learning communities will all go through their Georgia Tech admissions portal. Again, if you are a student that enjoys or likes impact or likes another LLC over another, you'll need to go to the admissions portal to see the application process. It'll be a either on the left or right hand side. There'll be a tab that says living learning communities and the student will have to go in their admissions portal to particularly apply to that community and I'll break down what that is. And so you can participate in, in a summer program such as Ignite summer programs or Challenge. Um, both of those summer programs do operate in the summer, obviously, but you can participate in a fall LLC. So a fall live and learning community is impact. It could be grand challenges. It could be honors, global leadership, um, explore. Those are fall live and learning communities. But if you are doing the summer one, you can do like it says here, you can participate in either Ignite or Challenge and then transition to um, impact or um, any of the fall LLCs. If you're in the spring, you obviously do your LLC and then if you transition in the summer, there'll be a downtime where students can move out. Same for for the fall students in the summer. We give them a grace period and time to move out or move their things to their room. So um, for them, they are required to um, at least rank their top two LLCs. And so if a student goes in to do their application, they at least have to rank and, and specify which ones they want to do. And the reason we do this is that we don't do a controlled process, meaning I choose what the student is doing. I let them tell me in their application, in their choice, and then those are the two decisions that we end up going with is what they want to do, pending room in the community and program. Um, so you can also apply to as many as you like. Again, if you're invited to more than one, you must select one to join. So if you if your student is getting multiple offers to join an LLC. We just ask that the student at least choose one to join. Um, it can be more. It can be they can choose they want to join all of them. They might see one or two that they particularly like, um, or they might just have one solo LLC that like, they like, but they do have to make one choice. They do have to choose. Um, and then, of course, I'm a little biased here, but I would like you to choose Impact as your number one choice. Um, and I will be sure to get this. Um, to the staff to send out, but there's a QR code if you have your phones or you want to take a screenshot. I'll be sure to send that out, um, but we do send this to students as well. So if they want to sign up or go to the further application pieces, they can just scan the QR code here. So. All right, it's Q&A time, so I am done. Sharing my screen. And it's Q and A time. Cool. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Jeremy Brown and Courtney, for sharing just such wonderful information about Impact. I uh, truly, truly appreciate you all for joining us today. Uh, we do have a question, and I know you referenced it in the chat box, Jeremy. But if you can, just for the viewers um, and the recorders, people who are going to see the, see the recording, excuse me, um, who can we contact to find out what activities have been going on? or are scheduled for grand challenges uh, for first years. Mm -hmm. I can't tell if things aren't happening or if my daughter's just not going due to COVID and people are not distancing. Uh, she sounds like there haven't been many opportunities to get to know others. Okay, absolutely. And so I responded to, um, and I'll, I'll put the link to all of the LLCs here. Let me see if I can um make an announcement there and so that link that i just posted there sends you to the all llc's page because i want you all to see all of the llc's 
if you're that that question around grand challenges, I will answer. But that does that link that I just posted there in the announcement allows you to see the all LLC pages, which you can see impact. You can see with like Courtney mentioned in as well as grand challenges. And so um, that that link, once you click on it, you'll see a dialog box. You'll see in gold grand challenges and you can click on that link to take you to the grand challenges website. You might have to I know um, that some of the websites might have like a block on it or some trust, so you might have to accept the certificate. Um, but but that's the all LLC page. If it doesn't work, let me know and I'll try to get you another link for that. Um, but let me answer your question there. So different LLCs are doing things um, in different ways, meaning that um, impact is hybrid. And so, like I said, I believe in a enriching experience in which students are meeting each other. Um, students are doing it in a safe way with mask on six feet apart. Um, people are also going to events in impact but again um, making sure that events that i'm going to that i, I really do for impact are safe um, both for myself and for the students and so there might be some llc's that might not have the same events and are doing it the same way and so some of our llc's are electing to do events that particularly might just be all virtual so they might have a faculty talk um, or they might have a project session that's stemming from their class that just might be virtual only. Um, and, and I believe in those opportunities as well. Um, but I also believe in the social aspect of a living and learning community. And so to me, if there are if, if a living and learning community isn't presenting opportunities for students that are living together and are working together and, and not allowing those to have allowing those LLCs to have those social experiences, there needs to be some ways for the living learning community to provide that in a safe way. Um, this not including just stuffing them in the class or stuffing them in the lounge. There are other creative ways in which you can do that because we all know that students particularly are talking to each other and want to meet each other. And I think the LLC is the best is one of the best ways to connect students to each other in a safe way. Um, but it, it's, it's depending on the LLC and how they do it. You know, each of them have their own budget, have their own learning outcomes, have has their own goals. But for impact, um, because I run impact, I have seen students feel like they belong. I've seen community. I've seen the research which I've done around students of color feeling like they belong. All of that goes into my programming model, which goes into how I run the community, which is also how I tell housing how I think the community should run when I'm not here because I work a nine to five. And so when I'm not around, students are also talking and building community, but I've set up a system in place that students feel comfortable doing that and also feel pretty safe as well. I hope that answered your question. Um, OK, so I see some more questions here. Tyler, would you like me to just go ahead and answer those two? Sure, sure. I think yeah, the RA question. OK, OK. Yeah, RAs and LLCs, yeah. Oh, OK, there are RAs, there are resident assistants in each LLC. Um, there is one RA per floor that particularly is of the same gender of that, you know, student. We have um, one RA um, per floor and we used to have two peer leaders, but we've now reduced it to one RA. That resident assistant does a couple things for that community. They provide support um, if a student is particularly um, needs help. It needs a resource on campus. It might be there's an academic struggle. There might be a student just needs a friend to talk to. A student might just have questions about laundry, dining halls, st student and campus services. Typically, your RAs are very, very, very well versed in some of those things. And so we always try to pick students that were in the living learning community as their RA. And so some of my impact students that are currently here, I'm probably going to choose them as an RA for next year if they apply and if they get the job, obviously. Um, so there are RAs that are in the community. We hire them intentionally, um, but they are good support systems. I mean, even in this stressful COVID time, my RAs have built community in ways that I can't as a professional staff member. And so um, I, I really give it up to a lot of our RAs, not only just in impact, but in all of the LLC formats. Um, so link to grand challenges doesn't work. Did, did Lacey, did we get one that works correctly? I 
<laughs> I just found one general one. So you all let me know. Yeah, right? I, I was able to to put another link in. I also put their, hey everyone, it's Lacey. I ever put their, um, they or email, Grand Challenges email, so that they could reach out to them directly to ask some more specific questions. And parents, you can always email Tyler and I at parents at gotech.edu with any questions at any time, and we will research the answer or get you to the person who does know the answer. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And so, uh, like Lacey said, the Grand Challenges staff, if you have specific questions about their program, let them know. Uh, via email. Um, I'm just able to talk on the capacity of what I know about all and learning community, so I apologize if I didn't answer something. Um, OK, so the LLC link doesn't have specific activities, so I went over some of the activities from impact, but each semester um, I give a list of events and I give a calendar to students, and so there are a list of activities on the impact page, um, impact community, all one word dot edu we have an impact events page in which i list pictures and, and videos and stuff like that so um check like courtney said you have to check the individual website and um that is that is there a way we can have a schedule of events for impact activities is it possible you can have an email list for parents yes there is and so what what i plan to do um, within the next uh, month or so, as well as as in the future, is to do a parent newsletter. Um, what that newsletter will entail is impact events, as well as contact information for me and the student assistants and team leaders, TLs, um, as well as just general information going on about the community. It's hard to do a newsletter each month when there's so much changing and things like that, and so I do send one to the students, and what I'm planning to do is send one to the parents. Um, with the year being so in flux with many different students kind of moving back and forth, um, a lot of my attention, to be honest with you all, has been on safety and COVID. And so I'll, I'll get back to <laughs> get, getting that parent uh, newsletter back, back on track, but that is something I'm working on. But within the capacity of myself just running Impact alone, um, it's one of the, th the things that I'm pretty much working on alone that I don't really have the capacity to do. But now that I have some student assistance, we'll get that. We'll get that going um, for that question. So no problem in doing that. My son is already in honors. Does he still apply to the LLC program each semester to be in the program? So that's a good question. If your son or your student is in honors, they will still need to apply. Um, they'll need to reapply to come back. Um, but depending on if the student wants to live off campus or on campus, that's a honor specific question because I believe most of your LLCs will have you staying in a specific apartment. So for honors, um, that might be Creasine on West Campus or it might be a street apartments. And so depending on what your where your student, excuse me, wants to live, that will depend on where they want to apply if they want it because we do have, like I said, upperclassmen live in learning communities that will be contingent upon where the student wants to stay. Um, and so um, I, I think for honors, like I said, I, I believe they do have to reapply simply because of the class components as well as the um, specific classes that they take. That's a little bit different than any other LLC. Um, and so I would definitely contact the honor staff just to be sure of that, but that's just kind of what I know from the outside. Would there be more programming happening in the spring semester compared to now? Um, for impact, I'm programmed out. I mean, I, <laughs> I think we offer um, at least, that's a good question. I think we offer at least bi-weekly program, both virtual and um, in-person with the hybrid model that we do. Um, I'll be offering pretty much, I'll say to answer that, the same amount of programs in the spring. Um, I think we do enough of being super busy. You got to remember it's their first year. And so with first year students, research says that a lot of the stress and academic stress around um, just being at a, at a difficult school like Georgia Tech, I try to offer a lot of support around that and then I'll do an event and then I'll kind of go back to doing things like that. But um, I, I do think there will be a little bit, there'll be a little bit more programming in the spring simply because they, they've been here at Tech and they're already used to the environment. And so, um, I try not to over-program students. I've worked in housing for five years. 
Plus, I was a grad hall director in an RA myself, and so I know what overprogramming looks like, and it's easy to do so. And so I do try to pace myself. Um, and then typically in March, April, I do add a little bit more programs. But because of Black History Month, Impact really does a lot of programming on campus. So we will pick it up in uh, January, February. Um, so. OK, let's see. Did I miss? anything one question i don't care i mean two questions um, okay based on your pictures it looks that students are connecting and making friends who do you recommend our student reach out to if they're having trouble connecting i'm gonna like that one that's a very good question um whoever asked that so well, i recommend several resources for the student um if they're having trouble reaching out or connecting with people um, number one, try their RA that's on their floor. Reach out to a person that's a little bit local to them and closer, close, close and closer to them that might be a staff member or a faculty member. We know that sometimes students might not feel comfortable going to a staff member or a professor talking about those things. And so I would recommend a student going to their RA or their hall director um, to talk about some of those opportunities. I would also consider the student connecting with RHA. RHA stands for Residence Hall Association. RHA um, has a lot of fun, um, just great programming for first year students, as well as ways to connect with students. Um, I think FLOWS, first year leadership organizations are also great if students are having trouble connecting to some of those um, students that are likely on their hall and with COVID. We, we do know that distancing and just, not, you know, kind of the the factor of not connecting as much as a thing. And so I want to acknowledge that. But there are several kind of social based um, programming organizations that allow students to still interact and meet others around campus, typically in a virtual format. There have been some in person opportunities, but typically students can kind of come as they go and interact as they want to. Um, and lastly, I would say the division of student life. Um, they do a lot of student life, does a lot of programming um, around students and interacting with students that might not be in their residence hall or might not be in their classes. And so um, I, I would shout out student life, uh, Dean Stein and his his uh, team, as well as housing and residence life. They do a lot of that stuff as well. And so, um, yeah, that I mean, if that student particularly is having trouble um, tell them to reach out, if, if, even if they have questions around that or or if those organizations I just listed, I'll put my email here. If those organizations you forgot or you need more about that, I'll drop my email and that student can also email me. I'm in the office pretty much um, three, four days out the week, and so I, I wouldn't mind um, emailing the student or dropping them a message about that um, for sure. So I'm going to go ahead and post that uh, my email so you, you should see that here in a second. Um, thank you. This info was helpful and my student doesn't always share with me. So yeah, we will we will do better with getting parents information in terms of emails and a lot of that stuff. Um, it's hard with a lot of those protocols shared just with students. And so I'm finding a way to nuance that and provide a newsletter for you all and a, and a medium to share information with you all. Um, and I'll be working with Tyler and Lacey and their team with some stuff. We'll, we'll work on some spring stuff. Um, once we get kind of, you know, cooled down in the semester and I look forward to interacting with you all more. Um, I'm trying to do this more and more as the program grows. Again, we're just two years old and so <laughs> uh, my program is is literally just starting and getting um, getting some momentum here. And so I'm looking forward to building our practices more as the program grows too. Uh, thank you so much, Jeremy. Uh, Courtney, do you have any uh, closing remarks or just anything you'd like to share before we close? I know, except that Jeremy has covered everything so well as usual. Um, and Dr. Brown, thank you so much for your time. Tyler and Lacey, thank you for your time as well. Um, and I, I definitely agree, Dr. Brown, that the newsletter for parents would be wonderful. So let's definitely collaborate on that. Absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Brown, for taking the time and Courtney for taking the time out of your schedule to be with us this evening. And most importantly, thank you parents for attending this webinar and just tuning in and hearing this great information. 
about uh, life at Georgia Tech and how we can support your students and just help get them to the finish line. Um, please know that this uh, will be recorded. Uh, this this presentation will be recorded um, and it will be available on our website, which I just posted in the chat box, parents.gatech.edu. Um, and then you'll go to the Stay Connected tab under virtual recordings to access this. Um, we'll have it posted to the website tomorrow morning. Uh, so that way you can refer back to it and just maybe even share it with your student as well. Uh, so thank you so much for being with us here today. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow for um, our two more webinars that we have uh, talking about philanthropy and also um, a panel um, of our students, some student leaders who work in our office as well as their parents and just kind of talking about what it's like um, to be a student at Georgia Tech, to be a parent, just to kind of pick their brains about their experiences. They're very successful students and parents. So look forward to just having you join us tomorrow. Have a great day.